Hi, I'm Annie McClanahan. I'm an assistant professor of English at University of California at Irvine. Um, so I'm here today to talk about graduate student debt, and I want to do it in two different ways. Um, so first, I want to talk a little bit about the relationship between debt and PhD training and professionalization. And here, I want largely to address those of us who teach graduate students, who mentor graduate students and run PhD programs, and think a little bit about how thinking about graduate student debt might or should change the way we think about grad student education more broadly. Um, so I want to make sort of two large points. The first is that I think that thinking about debt um, can and should change the way that we think and talk about professionalization. Um, this is an issue I've thought about a lot in terms of undergraduates um, as well. And my basic sense is that although I share my colleagues' concerns um, about the instrumentalization of education that happens when we talk or think too much about things like career outcomes, um, and professional outcomes and we encourage students to think about um, the career outcomes that might follow from a particular major or when we urge graduate students to think about professionalization early on in their um, sort of educational trajectory. I, I share my colleagues' concerns about what happens when we do that, but I also think that we can't honestly insist that either undergraduates or graduate students um, treat their education as something other than an, uh, a way towards a particular profession until we can ensure that they can get through that education without taking on an immense amount of debt. Um, I also think that thinking about debt can and should affect how we think about grad student recruitment. I think we have to be really honest about the total costs of a grad student education, not just funded programs versus unfunded programs, but all the other hidden costs that often um, graduate students might think of as being sort of their responsibility, um, things like paying for summers, paying for cost of rent when your stipend doesn't cover it, paying for travel, some of those hidden costs that I think students tend to sort of personalize and think of as their responsibility or their fault when they end up incurring debt for those kinds of things and, and, and really trying to be transparent about those expenses and costs. And the third thing I think is that we have to remember that um, because of the high cost of both an undergraduate and a graduate degree, um, debt connects up with other bigger issues of income inequality and access to higher education. Um, because the, the fact is, is that if a group of students starts a PhD program with the same levels of funding and the same stipends, but some of those students come in with tens of thousands of undergraduate debt and some of them don't, that means that those students do not, in fact, start the program in the same situation. Similarly, the difference between a student who's maybe whose parents were, were doctors or lawyers and who is used to the idea from, in terms of their family culture, used to the idea that accruing debt to pay for graduate education is a good thing, that student is in a different situation than a student who did not grow up thinking that or did not grow up with parents who were under those same circumstances. Um, and so I think it's really important to think about the ways that debt affects different students in different ways um, and in ways that also aren't always immediately visible. We don't always know how much undergraduate debt our starting graduate students come in with. Um, and I think we have to start understanding those effects and being transparent about them if we want to ensure that we're supporting a d diverse group of young scholars. Um, the second set of issues I want to talk about are a bit more abstract, and here I'm mostly speaking to graduate students themselves. Um, I was asked to answer the question, how can humanities scholarship help conceptualize new kinds of graduate student communities that articulate indebtedness as a social rather than individual issue? And I was thinking about this question, and I was about to start naming some of the things that graduate students could do to make this kind of um, community possible. And I realize that in a lot of ways, graduate student intellectual life is already like this, right? I realize that graduate student life is replete, often at the margins, often without any institutional um, support, um, with the kinds of communal solidarities and gift economies um, that would characterize a truly utopian form of free public education. Graduate students join together to read books um, in the evenings. Um, they linger in the hallways after class to continue the conversation. They um, attend talks and go for drinks afterwards to continue the conversation. Um, they read each other's work. They read each other's dissertation chapters and seminar papers and job market letters without being paid for it. They, they read each other's job market materials even when they're competing for the same jobs. Um, and they are also very politically organized, whether they have a union or they're trying to fight, they're fighting to start a union or they did fight for a union and lost. They're often the most actively politically engaged body in, in the institution of the university. 
So I think, in fact, that those of us who aren't graduate students actually have a lot to learn about graduate students, um, about how to turn income inequality and debt into political issues, um, and about how to create at the limits of the institution the kinds of utopian social forms that we want to see in the world more broadly. Um, so the only thing I think graduate students could do is basically more of this and maybe extending those kinds of solidarities and those kinds of communities out into the broader world. Um, in particular here, I'm thinking about um, adjunct faculty and other groups within the university, um, but also to reach out to their own students. I mean, the fact is, is that student debt, more than just about any other economic condition, is a deeply generational issue. It's not necessarily part of the experience of the parents or the professors of today's students. And I think that grad students who are situated sort of between the university and the student body and who are, as I'm saying, immensely canny and clear-eyed about their own economic conditions um, really are in a unique position to speak to that generational issue, um, to talk to their undergraduate students about debt and to begin to imagine with them what it would mean to have a truly public education and about the possibility that getting that education might mean that we all have to say we won't pay our debts anymore.